Hey, what's going on? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I lit my uh, recent short film teaser uh, that I uploaded a couple of days ago. I know a lot of people always ask me how I light whenever I upload a video, so I'm going to be doing a series on this now. Now, let me know if this is something you're really interested in because honestly, I'm just trying to gauge what people actually want to watch. So this is the very first Unreal Engine 5 cinematic lighting tutorial if you will. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I have this map here, which I purchased here, Secrets Temple. I think it was like $119. And to be honest, this thing is definitely worth it. Uh, as you can see right here, it's uh, 4.25 to 4.27 enabled, but I was able to merge this in Unreal Engine 5 right here, as you can see. But if you haven't seen that video, actually, I'll put the uh, link in the description below. So you can kind of watch it first or watch it after, it doesn't matter. So one of the very first thing that I actually had to change in this map is, as you can see, uh, the light flickering on the fire effect was a little bit too much. I mean, uh, fire shouldn't really sync up like that. So you can see it's all blinking the same time. I did not like that too much, so I actually disabled all of them. So whenever I click right here, you're going to see that it's selecting the fire. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that for now because what I really want is this light right above it because this is the actual light. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, scroll the way down, and you're going to see there's a light function material. This is a material blueprint, if you will. So what I'm going to do is just kind of delete that. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that. And as you can see, it's going to stop. Now, I think he has maybe two or three in the whole map. So let's do the same thing for the rest of it. You're going to see here, I'm going to go ahead and clear this out until we don't see the flickering anymore. See, there's one more right here. Now, if you want to know where that's at, you can simply just click the light again and click on this browse or bros, browse, bros. And you're going to see that there's a flicker light mat. Looks like there's two. So let me go ahead and clear this as well. All right. So as you can see right here, I didn't really bother about those ones because as you watch, if you watch the short, you're going to see that I started at the entrance right here. All right. So the first thing that I ended up doing here was actually turning the lights off. And this is pretty much good practice overall whenever you're working in Unreal. Whenever I am working in a you know dark scene, I usually just change the exposure to manual. And I would either just kind of like zero it out and just go from there. And like I said... I'm not a cinematographer. I just love watching movies. And that's really where I learn all of these looks and things like that and watching behind the scenes and so on and so forth. So by any means that I'm not a professional at lighting stuff, I just know enough to kind of get what I want, right? Now, as far as the color of the light, there are two lights that I like at night. I like the blue moonlight and I like the gray moonlight, the steel gray moonlight, which Shane Hurlbut, if you don't know who he is, go check him out. He's an amazing cinematographer. He's really popular with that grayish moonlight. But for this scene, I went with the blue one. This right here, I am actually having trouble trying to mimic uh, pretty much an HMI lighting with a tungsten balance camera. Because to me, that produces probably one of the best blue lights you can ever do in reality, in real movies. Additionally, you can do a tungsten light with a, a different white balance in camera, and that's what I mimic, right? But that's so difficult to do in CG animation. I haven't come up with a good way to do that yet, to mimic tungsten in here. So I remember watching Toy Story 4, and that animation movie probably has the best cinematography a CG animation movie can ever get. I mean, if you haven't seen Toy Story 4, go check it out because it is absolutely amazing as far as cinematography and lighting goes and the anamorphic lens and all that stuff. So what I did was I actually went to Google. So I'm going to go, I actually went to the images here and there is a scene right here, right here. And as you can see, this is amazing blue as you can see that does the blue effect right there and what i ended up doing was actually i pulled up a rec light which is a rectangular light and i placed that rec light i'm gonna press g right here and kind of like i'm just gonna move around and i'm gonna go right here if i remember correctly it was like up here somewhere where that blue-ish light was right and i'm gonna turn this up to like 24 so we can get a little bit more kick out of that Okay, so that's that's the light that I had right here. And what I did was I actually took the light color color picker right here and I went back to that image and I'm going to minimize this so 
I can do it. And I'm going to minimize this as well. I just took that color picker and I think I click somewhere right here. Okay. So I it clicked it, but it's okay. It still worked because you can see that the blue change. I'm going to press okay. So now that that color kind of copied it over. So you can see there's a nice blue to that. Bluish to it, kind of like a moonline effect. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this a lot brighter to kind of exaggerate that. I mean, obviously it wasn't that bright in the actual short that I did. But you can kind of see that blue coming in nicely there just from really colored picking. You know, that's something I learned. I don't know if you guys are familiar with MySpace. You learn how to do HTML color picking whenever you're creating your, your profile page. So that's what I learned that from. Pretty awesome stuff. But as you can see, we have that blue lighting now. Okay, and what I'm going to do so it's not copyrighted, I'm going to pull up my Ninja Warrior right here, which is going to replace the character that I used in the original short because the original short was copyrighted, obviously. It's owned by a uh, you know, big company. So I'm going to use this because this is copyright free. So we have the character right here. He's already set up. And what I like to do also is I'll, sometimes I go unlit because it gets pretty dark in there. But if you want, you can just turn it up in post process. You can just turn up the, turn it up a little bit, like maybe one so you can see a little bit there. So you can see we get that blue lighting here. And I think I added another light. I think I duplicated this right here just to give that, that shadow side just a little bit of a bump. And I think I turned this down to maybe 12, just a little bit there. Here's a point light. You can see the on and off right there. Just a little bit of kick, maybe just move it down like this because what I've seen a lot in movies and what I absolutely like the look in movies is this, they call it like, it's kind of like backlighting things, you know, whenever you're trying to create the mood, you're always backlighting things and you probably saw a lot of that in this short and probably in the rest of my animation shorts. I like to backlight because I love that look. I would never do this. Like I would, I mean, depending on this shot, I would never do this. You know, it's just, it just doesn't look as cinematic to me. So as much as you can, create the shadows. And again, this is a personal taste, right? A lot of people will probably say, no, I would never do that. But this is just a personal taste that I like. Creating some shadows in there, you know, just like that. That looks a lot dramatic than if I were to put that light right on top of the actor. So that's that right there. And what I'm going to do is actually copy this because we're going to be creating a lot more of this. Or actually, I can probably just... Uh, drag and copy a new light. So that's the first scene that he kind of walks in here. And now what we're going to do is go in here. All right. So right now, as you can see, again, we have that um, press G right here. We have that light flickering and that is way too much. That's really throwing off the vibe here. So I'm going to turn this off as well, similar to how we turned off the rest of it. And I'm going to press G so I can see that. See, I can't select it. So let me get closer. Let me go ahead and turn this fire off. Turn Click on this, and you're going to see that it's still here, the mat. Clear that out. And this one, again, also has that mat. So we're going to go ahead and clear that out so it's not flickering so much, right? So you can see it's a lot better. And obviously, there's a little bit more towards on this side, but it's okay. You get the point. You can just turn it off. All right. So coming in the shot now, um, I had the blue light, duplicated it, and actually brought one in here because I wanted that same kind of moonlight. The way I was thinking was since the the door was kind of open still, that a little bit of moonlight would probably seep in, you know, towards the character. So I'm going to go ahead and move this guy right here, our ninja, and I'm going to kind of push him forward, just like so. All right, and I'm going to kind of just make him that it's showing up right there. So we'll keep moving him right here, and I think the camera was over here. Right, so you can kind of see that. I mean, it's a little bit saturated that I like. As I mean, it's I, I think it's a little bit too saturated. So what I'll do is I will just kind of change this here, and maybe make it a little bit brighter. You know, so it's not too saturated. And press OK. I mean, you can mess around with the color here, but that looks pretty good. So that was what was backlighting him. Again, same concept, backlight, just 
backlight the crap out of your scene because it creates so much interesting points to it. And as you can see right here, on the closest side to the camera, it was pitch black. I mean, technically, I could have put a little bit of light right here, just a touch, but I just decided to go dark because the whole the whole movie in the short was about this individual going dark. So I wanted this as moody as possible. And that's pretty much for that scene right there. And what I did was I actually, let me go and hide this again. And then I'm going to go right here. And I think I just duplicated this kind of to just give him a little bit of kick light right here. Because what he's going to do is he's going to walk towards here. So it's kind of like a kind of like a slider going to the left. Now, it wasn't that bright. I didn't, I didn't turn it up that much, but I did just have a little bit, I think it was like a four or something, just a little bit of a kicker there so that we can see a little bit of his features there. All right, and then I ended up moving to the left and I did remove some of these pylons and let me go ahead and unlit this. I removed some of these to make room for the camera, so I just deleted it or hide it if you want, but... um. I made some room, especially right here. I kind of got rid of that so you can see the character a little bit more. And then going back to our backlighting kind of uh, technique, I'm going to duplicate this again because what I'm going to do is put this as back as possible, right? Because we're trying to create three-dimensional here. So I'm going to push this back all the way, all the way back. And I'm going to go back to my camera point of view right here. And this is what I love about Unreal is because you can create these real time. And this is actually uh, one of my favorite things to do is getting the lighting part because I never got to do this in real life. But cinematography was really one of the things that I actually enjoyed the most. You know, I just love lighting things, but obviously renting an HMI is so expensive, so I never got to play around with HMIs. You know, I got tungsten when I was doing uh, live action stuff, but I never got to practice this. And one of the great things about Unreal is, you know, I, I can practice these lighting techniques in here and I can play around with it. So I have it right there. And I think what I had to do was just maybe just give a little bit of light right there. So you can see there's more room in there. And I'm going to push this back again, you know, as, as far back as I can, because we're trying to create some three-dimensional, right? So it's not going to look one-to-one, -one, but you kind of see the point of me creating those pool of lights. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of tone this down a little bit because we don't, we don't want it too much. We just want a little bit of something there like the moon is, seep is seeping through. And then again, you guessed it, I'm going to duplicate that uh, rec light right there and we're going to duplicate it again and just take it back as far as we can. And I'm going to change this to stationary. Because uh, you can only have so many stationary. I'm going to change it to movable because you can only have so many stationary lights. That's why you got that red marking there. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to push it all the way back again. Move it down. And as far as we can, really. I mean, as far as we can do, that is going to create a really nice effect to it. And again, you can you can finesse these. I mean, honestly, for that short, I didn't take much time at all. It, the rendering took a little bit longer, but everything else as far as setup goes, it did not take a long time because, again, the power of real time, the power of Unreal Engine. So you can't kind of see it. So again, I'm going to move it a little bit to the left a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on because right now you really can't see it. And I'm going to face it that way. You can increase it if you want. Let's do like 100 because you saw I kind of tracked all the way like all the way down here. Okay. So that's that lighting right there that I did. Uh, we got two backlights. We got this light right here just to give him a little bit of light. And then obviously the last piece of this puzzle is whenever he goes to the middle of this um, this area here. So I'm going to put him in the middle of the area there. Okay. And I'll put him in the center here. And again, we're going to duplicate that same moonlight, right? And because what we're trying to do is pretend like there's like a hole on top of that uh, that rooftop there that kind of just, you know, letting some uh, light in. I mean, as long as you don't see the roof, I can sell it, right? Like you really don't know. So I'm going to go over here and make this a little bit faster. And um, it was a top light that I did because I kind of wanted it to mimic again like a light leaking there. So I'm going to go with maybe 256 and I'm going to rotate it. I mean, I could have done it the other way. Just kind of rotate it like so. And then if you want to turn off the snapping, I'll turn all these off. 
and I can do the barn door just to kind of, you know, so it's not spilling everywhere like this. You can kind of see in the circle. You kind of control that spill. So kind of like a source height right here. And we're going to turn the barn door just a little bit so that we get a little bit of a fall off right there, which looks really nice. And then I'm going to go up and then up like so. And that is really the look as far as the top lighting go. The color might have been a little bit different, but I it was the same process. I copied it from that Toy Story thing. Okay, so facing the character like right here, I had, I believe, one of these lights. So I just kind of cheated, right? So I moved it a little bit towards the camera so we can get a little bit of light right there. So you can see that is freaking amazing. So we have a top light and we have that fill right here, just filling it up. And that's pretty much it. That is how I pretty much lit that scene. I mean, obviously I turned off more of those light bulbs, but that is how I lit that short teaser that I just uploaded recently. So yeah, if you are interested in seeing a lot more of these breakdowns and how I light these shorts, let me know. Because honestly, I don't want to spend a lot of time in something that people don't really watch. So make sure you like this video and leave a comment if you want me to do a lot more of these breakdowns, all right? If you all have any questions, like always, let me know. And again, 50,000 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away a motion capture suit for the free. So check out the link in the description below for more information.